in current circumstances. So thank you very much for coming along tonight. And hopefully by the end of the night, we'll have clarified some things for you to make the whole process much, much simpler. So, so welcome. Next slide, please, Miss. So what's the purpose of the evening then? So what I'd like to do by the end of the evening tonight is to give you um, some context as to um, the options process and um, the options pathways that you that your uh, ch ch child or children um, are on um, and the choices available to you and a little bit of the history behind that. To go through the actual process, how do you fill the form in? Um, what does it mean? Um, don't quite understand, Miss, why you're making me do three when I only want to actually choose one subject here. I'll go a little bit behind the reasons for that so that you're better informed there. And then also some general advice and guidance as to which subjects or combinations of subjects we would recommend that you choose um, or not choose, depending on the circumstances. Um, so hopefully by the time we go through that, you'll, you'll be clear about this. And also to allow you um, all to gain a, a gain a greater uh, appreciation of what's involved in studying the various subjects at Key Stage 4. So whilst in a normal options evening, you'd have an opportunity to listen to me in this presentation, which actually will be more or less the same as I would have delivered to you, um, we would normally be able to go and visit uh, specialist teachers and have a conversation in the chat with them. They'd have a range of resources and they'd be able to talk to you about their subjects. Well, that obviously can't happen now. So instead, what we have is uh, on our website, we have a range of videos that, that teachers have made for you where they've spoken about the subject that they have to offer, a little bit about what's involved with studying that subject, and actually quite importantly too, what type of person the subject is suited for, because not all of the subjects we offer suit every student. So it's really good if you have a look on the website tonight after uh, this presentation, have a look at those videos, um, and you'll see that there's some there from Graham School as well. And the ones from Graham School have the teachers on them mostly, so you'll be able to see their faces, which also helps. Um, so yeah, have a look at those and that'll give you a little bit of an insight into our key stage four subjects too. So I'm going to hand over now to um, Miss Welsh and she'll talk to you a little bit about the partnerships um, with school. Thank you, Mrs Prentice. And I would just like to say um, it is absolutely fantastic to see so many of you here tonight. And as Mrs Prentice has said, it's been a really busy night. We've had three sessions and we've had lots of families come along. And like so much that we've had to do over this last year, this is not our usual way of doing things. But the fact that you are here tonight is really powerful because it shows that we are all in it together home, school and the students all working together. And when we do that successfully, it helps our children achieve success. Tonight's a really big milestone for your children in what's been so far quite a disjointed school career, but I'm really excited for them to get this opportunity to hear all about the options process, all the amazing options that are open to the children and to benefit from all that George Pinder has to offer them over the next three years. Thank you, Mrs Prentice. Thanks, Mrs Welsh. So then, uh, why are we asking you a big question, isn't it, to make these option choices so early uh, in year eight? Selecting option choices in year eight is the norm in Hope Learning Trust schools. So all the schools that are part of the trust have their options process in year eight. And what that gives you is, is a three year key stage four. Now that three year key stage four means that we are able to offer more option subjects. Each GCSE has a minimum number of guided learning hours. And we have to fit those guided learning hours in. And if we have three years to do it, it means we have more time to do it. And with more time, it means that we can offer more subjects. If we try to squash it into two years, as some schools do, we wouldn't be able to fit in such a broad range of options. You'd be limited to one option in some cases, actually, and not, not the three or four that we're offering you. So that's one of the main reasons behind it. It gives us enough time to cover the necessary content and learn the key skills because we've got three years in which to do it. And then it will meticulously prepare students for courses that have a much greater emphasis now on final or terminal exams. So our GCSEs now, generally speaking, have one exam at the very, very end of the course. That's the summer of year 11. And our three-year course builds up experience and skills to allow our students to do the very, very best in that final GCSE exam. Next slide, please, Miss. 
In addition to that, the Department of Education have quite a strong um, input into the subjects that we offer and the subjects that we ask you to do or, or actually make you do. They insist that we offer you a broad and balanced curriculum. And they also insist that students across the country summer, uh, study similar qualifications. So there are a number of core subjects that all schools and all students must study so that we all come out of our post our 16, um, up to 16 years of education with the same subject and the same backgrounds. If you go on to the next slide, please, Miss. So those core subjects, it will come as no surprise to you to learn are GCSE maths. Everyone must study that right across the country, not just at George Pinder. GCSE English, and that includes English language and English literature. And then GC, GCSE science. And you have a choice here of also, if you wanted to, in your options, including separate science in addition to that combined science that you must study. So that GCSE in maths, English and science actually gives you five GCSEs altogether. So whilst it only looks like three subjects, because there are two in English, two in science, the science is worth two and one in maths, there's your five GCSEs to start with before we even have our options. Now, in addition to those core subjects, we also on your timetable have core PE. So that's two lessons of PE per week. That is to ensure that you remain healthy and active and you understand what healthy lifestyles are. Very, very important. There is no assessment in core PE. It's a practical subject, much as it is for you now. It will just develop further as you move up the school. So in addition to core PE, we also have philosophy and ethics. And you'll be familiar with that because this is your second year of studying philosophy and ethics now. So you know, know the sort of content that's involved in that course. So it's looking at healthy lifestyles, it's looking at dealing with mental health, um, dealing with money and um, relationships and so on. And in addition to that, it also covers the compulsory part of our RE curriculum that the government insists that we study at, at high school. So RE is combined there in that philosophy and ethics curriculum. There's one lesson of that a week on your timetable, exactly as there is now. So that's your core subjects. Um, so let's move on then to those GCSEs and the options that you're going to be looking at. So over the last couple of years, GCSEs have undergone um, a full overhaul. The content's been stepped up and many of them now no longer have any controlled assessment or coursework. There used to be quite a lot of coursework involved in GCSEs. For the most part, that has got no more coursework. It's just that terminal exam in the summer. And I've got there on the slideshow that you will have your exams in the summer of 2024. Now, that seems like years away, doesn't it? It seems like a long, long way away, but it, it will fly by. We'll be there before we even know it. And when you have those terminal exams in your GCSEs, you'll be graded nine to one. So no longer are we graded A star to G for our GCSEs. It's a numerical grade now from nine to one. You'll be familiar with that, actually, because you've been, we've been reporting on that in your reports anyway, even in Key Stage 3. So 9 is the highest grade and 1 would be the lowest grade. A grade 5 is an equivalent of a good pass. That was a good pass at GCSE. And a 4 is also a pass at a GCSE. So it's to bear that in mind and what these numbers might mean. Next slide, please, Miss. So students at George Pinder School will take between eight and 10 qualifications for their examinations. These qualifications can be GCSEs. A lot of the subjects that we offer are GCSEs. A GCSE tends to be our more traditional subjects, geography, history, modern foreign languages. They usually have the exam, as I've said already, right at the very end, and a very small, if any, coursework element now exists with those GCSEs. And as I've explained already, they're awarded from a grade nine down to a grade one. We also offer non-GCSE subjects as part of your options. They can be BTECs, VCERTs, CASH or Cambridge National Awards. And if you have a look in the options booklet, it's clear there which subjects these are. You need to read about what these qualifications are. They're more vocational, so they're more employment orientated. They tend to be more practical subjects and they will have a coursework emphasis. Like it can be up to 50% coursework value. Those subjects are graded from distinction star to pass, 
and they can be available at level one and level two. Level two is a GCSE equivalent. Now, the important thing to note, if you click again for me, miss, is that these subjects have equal status, equal value. When you leave us and go off to sixth form or the tech or wherever you go to next, whether you have these vocational subjects or the more traditional GCSEs, they are worth the same to you. College will be equally happy if you have one or the other, okay? So I don't want you to think the vocational ones aren't worth the same because they absolutely are. They are still a valuable qualification that will allow you to progress all the way up to university if you want to. Next slide, please, miss. So securing the best outcomes for all our students is obviously the core of what it is that we try to do. And the Department of Education have very strong influence on that and they make the strong recommendations about the subjects that you should study up to the age of 16, which is why we have to include, we must include things like English, Maths and Science, that core PE, that philosophy and ethics. And at George Pinder School, we, importance of, we um, recognise the importance of student, students having the best possible outcomes so that you can then continue into the subjects that you want to do post 16. We therefore make very strong recommendations and in fact insist that you study what we call an EBAC subject. And I think the next slide will explain what these are in a little more detail. So our EBAC subjects are geography, history, German, French and Spanish. And I'm going to stop there. I'll talk about the other two in a minute. You'll have noticed in your option forms that you received today that they are split up into sections. And some of the sections will say this is your EBAC section and you must choose from that either geography or history and depending on your pathway you might also be asked to choose a modern foreign language German, French or Spanish or those could be in your option subjects however geography and history are an absolute essential necessity and we ask every student to choose one of those as their EBAC qualification. I'm just going to talk a little bit further about German, French and Spanish, because whilst French is a subject that you have studied in year seven and year eight, you can now at this point choose German or Spanish. You will all start at the same starting point, even though you haven't studied that subject before, and you'll be able to rapidly move through the course to make sure you can achieve your full potential. And obviously, if you study French, you've got that two year background there of studying that already with us. But German and Spanish are also open to you and you can choose those. Now, in addition to that, in your open or uh, option choice, you will be able to choose separate sciences or computer science. These two subjects also form part of the EBAC qualification. So that just stretches that experience and that qualification a little bit further. Now, the EBAC qualification isn't an actual certificate. You don't get a certificate that says here is your EBAC qualification. But post-16 providers recognise it as a group of academically rigorous qualifications that will allow you then, as I said, to progress into almost any subject post-16 that you would want to choose, which is why we think it's so important that you have those in your suite of qualifications. Next slide, please, Miss. So in addition to those EBAC subjects that are also that are so important, we also provide a wide range of options by including some collaborative courses at Graham School. Now our relationship with Graham School has really strengthened over the years and we send upwards of 40 students um, in year, uh, current year 9 and year 10 across to Graham School um, for these subjects that they offer. So what happens with those is that if you chose one of those subjects, you'd come into school as normal. I think it's a Thursday morning you'd be doing them. And um, you'd go to tutor time as normal and get your mark. Then during tutor time, you'd come down to the student entrance and, uh, and you'll, be, you'll be put on a bus. Um, it's a private bus that we hire and that bus will take you across to Graham School. You will spend lesson one and two across at Graham School studying those subjects. And then the bus will take you back in time for lesson three and it takes you back during break okay so you will spend your break on that day on the bus coming back from Graham school to Pinder so as I said that's a double lesson and I'm fairly certain it'll be a Thursday the other thing to note on this slide is I've put some little funny little stars and uh, hashtags there next to some of those subjects 
I just want to point out that computer science and psychology, these are both academically rigorous subjects. So they don't appear on the supported or the tailored pathway. The last thing we want is for a student to select a subject and then find that actually at this moment in time, it's too challenging for them. So we've withdrawn it from the supported and the tailored pathway. So they're not available to you there. Textile design, I've got a little hashtag next to that. The reason for that is that you cannot choose textiles design and art and design together. They are the same qualification. They have a different focus because one focuses on textiles whilst the other focuses on um, all the different media that you can have within art and design. But it is the same qualification. Therefore, if you had both of them, you'd end up only actually having one GCSE, which you wouldn't want because we want you to have that broad and balanced um, curriculum, don't we, that allows you to move on. The other one to note then is a BTEC Technical Award for Performing Arts and at Graham School they offer dance. So that again is the same qualification as we have here but we have drama. Okay so the focus we offer is drama. So you can't choose both of those because it's effectively the same qualification. So you would either have dance over a Graham School or drama with us but you can't choose both of them. So that's our offer at Graham School. As I said, it's very, very popular and it does give us access to those other subjects that we don't offer here at Pinder. Next slide, please, Miss. So that brings me on then to our pathways. So you've received your option forms, you received the letter, didn't you, that told you which pathway you were on and then your option forms probably given you a little bit more information as to exactly what that will mean. So every student has been allocated a pathway and this isn't a decision that we take lightly. A lot of thought, a lot of consideration has gone into uh, placing students on pathways because we realise that it does heavily influence the option choices you have available to you. So what we've looked at in order to allocate those pathways is we've actually gone all the way back to primary school and your key stage two outcomes. We've looked at that to see what level you're working at then. We've then had a look at the CAT test you did. Now you might remember when you first came to us in year seven, we all went into the sports hall and you had a set of tests. I think it took about a day and a half where we tested you. And these are standard tests that are taken right across the country. And those tests were able to then tell us a little bit about your ability. Now remember maybe being shuffled around some classes after we got the results of those two. So those were a CATS test that we took in year seven. And that was still quite a long time ago, wasn't it? You'll also remember when we came back in September, we spent some time in the computer rooms, didn't we? And you did readings tests for me, and you did spelling tests for me, and you also did progress tests in English, maths and science. So these ones were much more recent. And again, they're standardised tests. So these are tests that people took right across the country and they gave, gave us lots of information about your ability band. We also did reading tests and spelling tests. And then as well as all of that and all those tests that we did, we talked to your teachers. So we spoke to your English teachers, your maths teachers, we spoke to your language teachers. And for, in some cases, we spoke to uh, Ms. Tunnard or Senko to find out which pathways they thought were most suitable to you, for you. And all of that information together then determined which pathway we placed you on. Okay, so a lot of thought went into that and it wasn't something that we did lightly. So that's why you're on the pathways that you're on. Next slide, please, Miss. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about the pathways and what that means for the choices that you are able to make. So some of you are on what we have called the enhanced pathway. The enhanced pathway is a pathway that we insist you have a humanity option and a modern foreign language. So you remember that EBAC qualification I spoke about earlier. If you're on the enhanced pathway, you will have a full EBAC qualification because you'll be doing a humanities subject. You must choose between history and geography. And you'll see I've made my choice. I've chosen geography for my humanity option. Then for my modern foreign language option, you get to choose between French, Spanish and German. And remember I said, it doesn't matter that you've not studied Spanish so far. Nobody has, you're all starting at the same place. You can choose Spanish now if you like, or German or French. So I've decided to opt for Spanish. So that's why I've put that there. 
Okay, the next one. Now, this one's really important. The next one is your preference option. This is the subject that you absolutely are desperate to do. It's the subject that you like most in school, other than, obviously, English, maths and science, which you do already, the geography that you've chosen, the humanities that you've chosen, and the language that you've chosen. What's that other subject that you're desperate to do? The one that you think actually you might have a career in, or you just love the subject. That needs to be your preference option. And we will try our very, very hardest to make sure that that is an option that you definitely are given when we do your timetable. Then below that, on your form, there's what we call the open option. And if you're on the enhanced pathway, I've asked you to select three subjects in the uh, open um, section of that form. Out of those three subjects, you will study one of them. There isn't a ranking, so you don't get to choose one, two and three, and one is your favourite and two is your second favourite and three is your, le your least favourite. It is just three subjects. And out of those three subjects, you will be given one of them that will appear on your timetable. And once I've gone through all of these, I'll explain why we've worked it this way. So that's our enhanced pathway. Next slide, please, miss. So I'm going to talk about the standard pathway now. Now I'm aware that there are a few of you that are on a pathway called standard and enhanced. And I'll talk about that in a minute once I've gone through this one. So our standard pathway, again, we insist that you have an EBAC subject in here. And this time, I'm asking that you choose a humanity between geography and history. You must choose one of those. Then you have that preference option again. OK, that subject that you're desperate to do, the one you want most, the one that I will try the hardest to make sure you have on your timetable. And then your open option. And this time, if you're on the standard pathway, I'm asking you to choose four open option subjects because you will study two of them on your timetable. And if you look at the red circles, you can see those four subjects then that will be on my timetable. OK, because I chose drama, sport, art and childcare in no particular order. And then I'm pleased to see that I've got drama and childcare on my timetable. So I mentioned this other pathway, this one that's sort of in between. If you're on the standard and enhanced pathway, then you're going to be lucky enough to be able to choose whether you have um, your options from the enhanced pathway form or the standard pathway form. I don't mind which form you choose to select your options on, but only use one of them. In the email I sent out to you today, I've put the links for both, but you've only to choose one of them and then submit it. I don't mind which you choose, it makes no difference, but you're lucky enough to be able to have the choice of either pathway. So that's standard and standard and enhanced. Next slide, please, Miss. So we now have the supported pathway. Now, just to put this into context, we have about 42 students, 42 students, I think, on the supported pathway. So if you are on the supported pathway, don't think, oh, I'm the only one, because you're not. Huge, huge number of students are on our supported pathway. So what exactly does that mean? Well, let's have a look. There's that EBAC option again. And you can see I've still chosen geography. I think I must like geography a lot because I keep choosing it, don't I? So there, there we are. I've chosen geography between geography and history. I've got geography in mind. And then I've got this next subject here called study plus. And on my form, I can see that I don't have any option there. I must choose study plus. OK, I have to choose it. Study plus will give you one hour extra of maths and one hour extra of English in a week. Now, the reason for that is because we need to make sure that we're giving you the best possible chance of passing your GCSE maths and your GCSE, GCSE English while you're still with us at George Pinder School. Because if you don't pass them, if you don't get a four or above before you leave us, then when you go to college, you have to keep doing them. And we would much rather that you pass them with us so that you don't have to keep studying GCSEs when you're in college and you should be doing uh, level three courses by that point. OK, that's why you've got that extra English and maths lesson there on your timetable. It will also help you be able to better cope with your other GCSEs, having that little bit extra support there with those two subjects 
you'll find your other options much, much easier to cope with. So then again, I have my preferred option when I'm on the supported pathway. So there's that subject that I'm desperate to do. So there's music, okay? I've chosen music again, that's the one I'm desperate to do and that's the one I will try my hardest to make sure you get as your option. And then lastly, I ask you to choose three more, three more subjects in the open section. And out of those three, you will be able to have one of those on your timetable. Remember, they're not ranked. There's not a first, second, third, okay? Three subjects I would be happy to study, okay? And you will have one of those then on your timetable. So that's our supported pathway. As I said, there's about 42 of us that are on that one. And then the final pathway. Now this one's much smaller. There are much fewer students on this. Um, so quite a small cohort. And if we have a look at these options, I can see, well, there's that study plus subject again. So if you're on the tailored pathway, you will have that extra hour of maths and that extra hour of English in a week to help you make sure that you're best prepared to study, the, to pass those GCSEs and also to support you with your other subjects. I've also got this subject called COPE that I have to choose. COPE stands for Certificate of Personal Effectiveness. And that's a subject that will teach you lots of really important skills, study skills, research skills, skills that are going to help you focus and pass your other GCSE subjects, as well as skills that you'll find useful in everyday life. So that subject is not caught an exam at the end. That's one of the really good things about it. You pass units all throughout the year, okay? So the workload for that exam and, and that subject is, is spread out across the year because there is no exam at the end. There's my preferred option again. There's that music that I was desperate, desperate to do. It's the one subject I would absolutely love to do. And that's the one that I will try my hardest to give you. And I've also asked you to choose three options in that open option subject. Remember, no ranking, and you will be studying one of them. And there's design and technology. That's the one that I've chosen in there, and that's what's going to be appearing on my timetable. So that's our pathways. That's the reason behind why you've been put on the pathway that you've been put on, and the reason behind some of those subjects and why we ask you to study them. Next slide, please, miss. So what happens then? when I submit my form. So when you've done your form, you'll receive an email back straight away that will confirm your choices. So you'll be able to check that what you think you've chosen is what I think you've chosen. Okay, now, if you then think, oh no, I didn't want that, I want to change my mind, then you are able to take your option form back and edit it. Okay, if you click on the blue words, I think that are in that email, it says um, edit response, you'll then be able to make some changes. I would rather you didn't keep submitting it and then keep editing it. I would rather you thought really long and hard before you made any choices and then submitted the form. So we don't have to have that backwards and forwards. But if you need to, you can take it back and you can change it. Um, so the options forms then will be locked on the 19th of March. And by that point, you will not be able to access them again. Can you just click again Miss, so that, that date appears? I thought we had a date on there, it seems to have vanished. So the 19th of March is when the option forms will be locked. Now I said that it is not first come, first serve. So if you come off of this meeting straight away tonight and decide to fill your option forms in and send it to me, that doesn't mean that you have a better chance of getting the options that you have chosen. I will not be looking at any of these forms until after the window closes, okay? It is not first come, first served. Everyone has an equal chance and an equal opportunity of getting the subjects that they've chosen. That's why I don't really want you to come off now tonight and go and make your choices. In fact, you need to wait until we're back at school. Can you click again then, Miss, please? When you're back at school, you'll be able to talk to your teachers. So when you're making your choices, well, what subjects should you be choosing? Try and think ahead. Some of you might have an idea of what it is that you want to do when you leave school. Most of you won't, and that's absolutely normal, okay? But I want you to think about what subjects are going to give me the best chance possible. And what subjects will give me the best chance possible of getting into university? Even if you don't want to get to university, that's fine. 
But if you've got the subjects that would allow you to get into university, that means you'll get into anything, okay? Because it gives you, it opens doors for you. It gives you that wide range and that wide choice. But also consider apprenticeships and vocational pathways. If a vocational subject is going to get you where you want to be when you leave us, then maybe have a look at those and see whether those would be the best, better options for you. Can you click again, please, miss? When you're doing your subjects choices, think about which subjects you enjoy. If you enjoy a subject, you're going to be much more likely to want to work hard in it. Therefore, you're much more likely to do well in it. Please do not choose a subject because you like the teacher. Teachers leave, okay? Hopefully our teachers won't leave, but sometimes they leave, they move on. And I wouldn't want you to be stuck in a subject then that you've only chosen because you like the teacher. Now they're not there anymore. Also, really, really important, please do not choose a subject because your friends have chosen it. You will know, because it will have happened to you, that friends fall out. I don't want you again to be stuck in a subject you've chosen because your friend has chosen it, you don't like it, and now you have to do it even though you have no interest in it, and you don't have that friend anymore either. Okay, so don't choose them because your friends, friends are doing them and don't choose them because you like the teacher. Choose them because you like them and you enjoy them. Also consider your workload, okay? If you have a lot of really heavy GCSEs, you've got to think about how hard you are going to have to work. Now, all GCSEs are hard work, okay? Don't get me wrong, they absolutely are. But think about that workload. If you choose a vocational subject, there's more chance that part of that will be coursework which means it's not all dependent upon that exam at the end. And maybe some of the assessments might be spread out across the three years. So think about that. Think about your workload. Next slide, please, miss. Ah, if you have no clear plan, keep your options as open as possible. As I said, most of you probably won't know what you want to do. So try and choose a really broad range of subjects. Don't narrow everything down into arts subjects, which then would mean you wouldn't be able to do technology subjects, for example. So try and keep it as broad as you possibly can. Next slide, please. So tonight then, what next? So use the live chat. Hopefully you've been doing that to ask Miss some questions as we've been going through. And if you have any other questions that we're not answering tonight or that come up um, as the, the days and weeks progress, then by all means, get in touch with me. You have my email address. It's in the, the options booklet. You will see me around school, OK, a lot. Some of you do already um, if you're in school at the moment. But over the next weeks um, when we're back, um, if you've got any questions, just grab me, just ask me. Make sure you ask your teachers as well when you come back. That's going to be really important. They're going to want to talk to you about their subjects and they're want, going to want um, you to understand what's involved with them. Now, as well as that, um, on the website, all of your option subject teachers have made short video clips to describe each subject. So it's going to be well worth your time after the meeting tonight to go onto the website. There's a big yellow banner on the home page. If you just click on that, it will take you to our options section and you'll be able to see all the separate videos. You don't have to watch them all, just watch the ones that you're interested in. But actually, sometimes it's useful to eliminate subjects as important or it's as important as to actually say, oh, yes, I would quite like this one. It's quite important sometimes to say, well, I definitely don't want to do that. And that can help you when you make your option choices. So have a look at those videos and listen to what the teachers say. Especially also listen to what type of person tends to do well in that subject, okay? Because then you can have a better idea about whether it might be suitable for you. So over the coming days then, discuss with your child, discuss at home what subjects they might want to study. Um, make sure you're speaking to your teachers. Fortunately, we are back next week, so that's good. You'll have an opportunity to do that. You can contact the school, get in touch with me with any follow-up questions that you might need. Please don't submit any forms until you've had the chance to talk to your teachers. So I don't want to see any forms back, okay? Certainly not tonight, certainly not this week, and really not until the end of at least the end of the first week back. Let's make sure you've had a chance to talk to everybody you need to talk to about your choices before you start actually making your choice. Can you click again then, please, miss? Do your research. So if you want to go to Ask and Bryan College to study animal care, well, what GCSEs do they say you need to do? If you want to go to sixth form um, because you want to do an A-level in law, 
well, what GCSEs am I going to do need to do in order to be able to access that course? So have a look at post 16 providers, see what it is that they're asking for in terms of GCSEs. That will also help you make your choices. So like I've said this already, 19th of March, that's when the forms will close. It'll be at three o'clock, it'll be the end of the day. I'll then click them off so you won't be able to submit them after that point. Now, it's really important that you do submit them. I said already, it's not first come, first serve. But if your form comes in after the deadline, then the chances of you getting the subject that you've chosen will be diminished because I will start the process. And it could be that the subjects you've chosen are already full because I've already allocated them to the people that have managed to get the form in on time. So make sure you've got that form in to me, please, by the 19th of March. Next slide, please. So here's the big question, isn't it? So am I going to get the choices that I have asked for? That's why our forms are designed the way they are. If I only had on the options form the four subjects that you wanted to choose and then I tried to fit it in with all the other restrictions that we've got, I wouldn't be able to. And you would end up not getting probably at least two of those subjects. So the way that we've worked it is to try and make sure you definitely get that preference. That's one subject you were desperate to do. But understanding that there are, there are um, three or four other subjects on there that you're still happy to do, that you would still be interested in. When I do the work on allocating your option subjects, we do what's called a best fit. So as many students as possible will get the options that they've chosen. Now, every year, the bad news is there's between sort of nine and 10 students whose option selections just don't fit, okay? They don't fit because maybe not enough people have chosen that subject that you wanted, therefore the class isn't running. So if I've only got four or five students choosing a subject, the class won't run. It's not viable for us to be able to run it. So I would have to ask you to choose something else. It could be that just the combination of subjects that you've chosen just hasn't fitted with what everybody else has done. And yours are just a little bit odd and they just don't quite fit. Now, if you are one of the people that hasn't had your options quite fitting, I'll get in touch with you personally and we'll have a chat about what we can do to try and make sure that you're happy and content with the options that you end up studying for your key stage four. We do find a solution, okay? It, I mean, I, I never leave anybody sort of completely miserable. There will be a solution, but I just need you to be aware that I cannot guarantee that you get everything that you're asking for. We absolutely do our best to give you it, but you just need to be aware that it might not happen. Um, so for the majority of students, when you send your form in, that's the last you will hear about it until you find out from me in the summer term what subjects you'll be studying. And you might think, well, why does it take so long? This? Why can't you not just tell me, you know, two weeks after? When we do our option subject, it's part, part of a much, much bigger picture. It's part of a large jigsaw involving uh, writing the entire timetable for the whole school. And until I've got all of the, piece of the pieces of the jigsaw in place, I can't confirm then what option subjects you'll be taking. The jigsaw is usually finished in June. That's when the timetable is usually finished, it's all written. And at that point, I'm able to confirm with you what subjects and what options you'll be studying next year. So in about June time, you'll get a letter or an email out that will tell you what option subjects you've got um, moving forward. So again, that's another exciting time. So if you just click again, Miss. If you've got any worries, obviously contact me. And just to recap, just to reiterate, there are no soft or easy options GCSE. It's all going to be hard work for you. I did mention that there are ways of making it slightly easier. If you're choosing these vocational subjects, it can ease the workload a little bit because you don't have all of the exams right at the very, very end. But it's, it's going to be hard work. Expect to be working hard. Expect to find it hard. It is supposed to be difficult and challenging for you. You need to use your brains, okay? So that's basically the gist of our, of our options process. Um, hopefully that's helped clarify um, some questions that you may have had. Um, and we'll probably now go back into the chat, make sure we've answered everything. You know where I am if you need me. When you're back in school, ask me any questions you like. Ask your teachers the questions. Uh, Mr. Thompson's also available. You have my email address if you need to email me.